Hi, this is the Change of a Podcast. Welcome back to the Weekly Grind. Um, a little bit different episode this week. Justin and I are back in Florida uh, from Mexico. We're just going to talk a little bit briefly about how the trip went, uh, what our upcoming schedule is going to be like for the next two two weeks at least. Um, and then we'll get into the episode AJ had a chance to sit down with former um, Notre Dame and Georgia Bulldog and current pro Tristan McCormick um, last week in Alabama. So we'll just give, I guess Justin and I will just give a quick little update on how like how we've been doing, what our schedule's like, and then we'll get into that episode. So Justin, why don't you give a quick little rundown on the Mexico trip, um, what you're feeling like, what you've been working on this week, and then we'll get into next week what our plans are. Yeah, trip was good. Mexico was was nice. I mean, it was um, good to be back on the singles court. Played a couple of matches. I think I got better as the weeks went on. We had Chris with us, our coach, on the road, which was nice as well to watch the matches and kind of talk through what's going on and to be there with the train sessions that the days went on as opposed to just being by ourselves and kind of doing some guesswork. I guess it was nice to have him there to kind of, I don't know, guide us a bit. Um, we did well in doubles. I thought I hadn't been doubles in probably about two years, so it was nice to play some doubles again. And yeah, I felt like my level improved as the time went on. Second week, I actually played a good match, I thought. Uh, but play, lost to Josh Sheehy, who ended up making the semis, losing to the eventual winner, Z Clark, who was on the podcast last week. Um, but he was playing very good, yeah, very congrats, well indoors. Congrats to Zeke, too, yeah. for, for winning his third pro title yeah and then right. second in the last month so it was funny that we uh yeah. we stayed the three of us stayed in the airbnb with him that week the week that he won and it was kind of a grind like the the airbnb as you can see last week on last week's episode it's not the nicest airbnb it was very hot and humid in the middle of the city yeah. Yeah. um not the most comfortable sleeping conditions either but obviously zeke is a fighter so congrats to him shout out to him for winning last week his third third title yeah How's the um, how's the training week been? What you been? Why don't you tell people what we've been working on? Um, yeah, training week's been good. So far, we've been alone because Chris is in Arkansas with Evan. I think Evan lost today in the second round of the challenger there, and I guess he'll come back tomorrow. But this week, for me, has been pretty simple. I feel like we've identified that what works best for me is that I. I have a pretty good rally ball, so I need to be solid when I'm in the rallies. I feel like my ball can kind of wear other people down. So I've been working on hitting and moving and just being solid. So I've been doing a lot of Jody in a corner just running me and I'm just making as many balls as I can, uh, working on the balance and fitness in that kind of area. And then using my other strength, which is my serve and the first ball with my forehand when I'm serving. So it's just been two, two and a half hours every day just for me, basically the first hour I run and the second hour we work on attacking. So um, I think it's been good. I think it's been uh, pretty targeted to, I guess, what the matches need to look like. And I guess we'll see if it if it pays off in San Diego yeah. next week. For people watching, so basically how Justin and I have been doing it is like we would get there, warm up, and then we take turns doing drills. So let's say, like you said, the first hour we would do moving drills. We would take turns where he does his sets of moving. Where if I'm in a corner, I would run him like to whatever he wants, whether that's two and two, one on one, random, um, you know, to one ball to each corner, whatever it is he wants. So we'll do that first set until he's tired. Then we would do it set for me. And then we rotate. Pretty much did that for the whole session. Um, then we did some transition stuff for me, like some volleying, approaching, that sort of stuff, and then serving first ball, like Justin said. And that's pretty much how we've done the last, what has it been, four days? Yeah, three, four. Well, the weekend's once, also, yeah, once, four or five days. Yeah, exactly. So that's pretty much what we've been doing. Um, but we have Chris back tomorrow for two, tomorrow's what, Thursday? So yeah, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, yeah so we have him back Saturday for two days. Mm -hmm. um, and then we head to San Diego. We'll join with AJ in San Diego. So we're excited to be with AJ again. And we'll have two more podcasts on the road with him um, with two guests. So that's exciting stuff. And um, yeah, after that, I guess we'll figure out what the rest of our summer is going to be like. I hear whispers of Tunisia. That's what I hear. 
Yeah, I don't know if I'm hearing those whispers yet, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. And th- how was your medical trip? How did that work out for you? It was interesting. I thought I had some tough draws. Played Zeke the first week, who's obviously he's in a good moment, just winning the, the, his pro title. And then I played also McHugh. Aiden McHugh the second week. Um, it was a little bit of an experiment for me, just trying to learn um, mentally which mood I need to be in while I play. So I think I got a little bit too carried away in the mo- in the mood that I chose. Which mood was that? That was the uh, play with a little bit of rage. So I tried to play, be a little bit upset, be a little bit pissed off um, to try to just get me fired up for the match and yeah. have me be pumped full of belief. But um, I think I got a little bit too carried away and a little bit too upset. So it it, it worked in against me at some points in the match. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think if that's the mood that I need to go with, then I need to learn how to control it a little bit more. But this week I've just been enjoying enjoying the practices, trying to have fun. Um, trying to not get overwhelmed by what I feel like I need to improve. So it's been good. I thought it's been a good training week. And, I, and I'm excited to play San Diego, especially because of doubles. Since we've had a good last two tournaments in doubles, we made semis the first week um, and quarters the second week. We've beaten a few good teams. So I'm excited to keep that run going and hopefully yeah. get in our doubles rankings to, to get up again. Um, I'm in the 600s again now in doubles, which is good. So hopefully I can keep pushing up and pass my career highs by the end of the summer. That'll be nice. Which is what? Five, five or nine, I think five or five, something like that. But um, I don't think about that too much. I just, I just think that I'm in a good moment in doubles. I feel like we've been playing well as a team. So I think we can have a good summer if we continue to improve on some of the small things that I've been focusing on. Um, and as a team, we can. I think we can do well. So. I'm excited to do that. Um, but anyway, let's not talk for too long because I think these boys had had quite a long discussion. So, sure. so yeah, every, everyone enjoy this um, this podcast. Thank you, to Tristan, for for coming on. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys next week with AJ. Enjoy. Uh, thank you for the. Uh, we got some subscribers, no? We we oh, we're getting the, up there in the numbers. Apparently, we're the biggest tennis, po- tennis podcast on on, <laughs> <laughs> on the internet. Okay, right chill, now. chill, chill. No, we're not. No, we're not. 100 right. subscribers on YouTube, 300 on Instagram, so we starting to get somewhere. Yeah, so thank you guys actually for, for supporting us. And if if you like what you're doing, then... I mean, if you like what we're doing, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, keep doing it. If you like what we're doing, <laughs> then uh, yeah, just show us some love, like and subscribe and share with friends who you think would be interested. And send us some questions, send us some topics that you want us to talk about and we'll cover them. We haven't... The last two weeks, we haven't done the... The ask us a question thing but we'll do that for next week for sure as we'll be together all together so um we'll get some topics covered next week on the podcast but yeah enjoy this week's episode and we'll see you guys next week in san diego all right so my question to you would be what is the best country so far that you've played in um what do you mean by best like the the experience the best experience everything um I would say definitely Ecuador. Um, I really, I really enjoyed the. I've spent probably a total of um, maybe like four week, three, three or four weeks there. I, I got my first ATP point there in summer of twenty one. Um, so that was like a really cool experience. That was the summer um, when things like restarted after COVID, and I didn't have any points, like even ITF points. So. I was signing up for all the U.S. futures, and I wasn't even close to any of the lists. Um, so I was kind of signing up and like looking for a way to get it, even just to get into qualies. And I w- saw that I got into qualies t- 25k in, in Ecuador, and um, and went there. It was in some like small town, three hours on into Guayaquil, which is like a, I guess, or it's a major city. And then it was kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, but I had a great experience. Um, I, I had a, actually a pretty good one to get my first ATP point. Um, and I just really enjoyed the people there. So They're like a, very it's a, hospitable. It's like a memory thing. Then. Oh yeah, for sure. A memory thing. So and con- then, yeah. Well, I was going to say conversely, what is the worst country that like a country you do not want to go and play again? Um, I, I was in, um, I went to Egypt for two weeks. 
and like Egypt. did not did not like it too much. I've heard mixed feelings about there. Oh, did the, you go to Charm? I went to Charm. Yeah, yeah. I've heard very good reviews. Good and very reviews bad. and bad reviews. I mean, it's just it, it's just extremely different. I I don't know. I I just it, I feel like most of the reason was because I didn't do my I didn't do well. <laughs> that helps a lot. <laughs> like I I feel like I feel like most of the time I like the country. When or I have my experience is just better when I do well because then I'm there yeah, and I'm no. winning and I'm happy and, and you're there for you know a while. I'm like yeah. everybody that I'm looking at I'm instead of instead of looking at them and saying like oh my god like these people I can't <laughs> I, I want to get away from this it's like oh like I'm here and I'm winning and and, and I'm having a great time and this place is great like it's it's totally I, related to results so I, th- I think people can relate to that for sure yeah all right so welcome to the changeover podcast this is the weekly grind and. Today's guest is Tristan McCormick. You want to introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, hi, everyone. This is my first podcast. Um, but uh, I am, my name is Tristan. I'm, I grew up in Philadelphia. Um, so similar to AJ, I'm a PA native. Keystone State. Um, but I live in Florida now. Uh, I went to college at Notre Dame, got my undergrad there, and then I did a fifth year at, at UGA. So I played five years of college tennis. Um, and I've been playing professionally since last summer. Um, so right yeah. now we are actually in Huntsville, Alabama. Yep. What do you think it's like so far here? I love it. I love it. Uh, I really like the South. Um, <laughs> as I, as I've gotten older, I've, I've really enjoyed kind of Florida, the Southern part of the part of the States. Yeah. Um, I just, it's just great weather. I feel like the people are very nice. Um, and and life just kind of moves a little bit slower in yeah, the it's, south it's the southern um, hospitality for sure. for sure yeah huntsville is uh it's beautiful though honestly dr- i drove here from pensacola and man alabama there's a whole lot of nothing yeah like just even driving on the highways usually there's some you know you see at least something on this on the side of the road but there there is nothing but huntsville seems like a kind of like a nice town in alabama uh, do you have anything to say about the tournament, the courts, the balls, anything so far? Because I, I know both of yeah. us just got here yesterday, so yeah. it's kind of tough to to gauge things right tough now. To, tough to gauge, yeah. Um, well, I haven't even hit on the actual match courts because there's a practice site. And, um, the, yeah, I hit twice at the practice site today. Um, but, yeah, it's it's nice. I, 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 I told I, – I don't know if I told you – but I, I told somebody that I get like, I'm, I feel like I'm playing a boys 16s USTA event. It's got the For junior some vibes reason, here. it's got junior vibes. Like, I don't know if it's because I'm out of Florida, but yeah, it's just, it's just got junior vibes. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> For some reason. Um, but no, I like it. It's, it's a, it's a cool town. And, it is. um, and yeah, I'm definitely the type of person to, I mean, I, I know I, I, um, I said uh, that like it's based on results, but I, I do try, I genuinely try no matter where I am. I try to appreciate the place for what it is, the yeah. good and the bad. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so kind of transitioning here, the reason I asked Tristan to be on the show is because I met him when I was little because we were both in middle States, which is a section of USTA. You want to talk about yeah, that? So bit? middle States is, um, Pennsylvania, Delaware. Southern, Southern New Jersey, and then Delaware. Um, so not, not the strongest section usually, we represent. yeah, but, but we, we have some good players. So, um, yeah, I grew up going, it, I'm from Philadelphia, so it's five hours east of Pittsburgh, but I went to Pittsburgh. I, I don't even know how many times to play tournaments and vice versa. I'm sure you went I, to Philadelphia. I took that area. drive probably every weekend when yeah. I was a junior. Oh, it was, it was so, so, so many tournaments, um, across the state. So, but yeah, you see like the same faces I, and, um, yeah, it's it's very very much full circle. Like, uh, uh, well, you 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 grew up playing more with my brother. My brother, who, I did. who's I'm five a, years I'm a older, bit than older than him. You're you're a f- few years older than me, but my brother's five years older than me. Uh, but AJ was good, so he's playing up. He was telling me, so that's kind of why he competed with my brother. Um, so yeah, we yeah middle states. I think another thing I want to talk about with you is we also had the same coach for. Like about a year. A little bit, yeah. Maybe yeah. a little overlap there. And you were yeah. young. We were both young. You were 11, I think, at the time. Yeah, I was young. And I just wanted to touch on, like, the sacrifice people have to make at such a young age mm-hmm. for tennis. Yeah, I mean, me um, being from Philadelphia wasn't definitely wasn't a, a tennis hotbed. Um, so I think uh, 
I, I, I started doing online school in, in, in middle school, which is like super young, I feel like. I and feel like that's normal though for tennis it's players. Very, I, I guess it is normal, yeah. Um, but it's, it's just wild to think about. Like I, I did the whole like leaving school, like just playing tennis and staying at home and doing schoolwork in middle school, which is like so young, like 10, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like. Yeah, for, for people who don't really know tennis, it is a major sacrifice early financially for the parents and like socially for kids. Like same for me. I was in seventh grade mm. and it was about spring break. I was about to head to Easter Bowl and the principal was like, yeah, you've missed 30 something days this year. Yeah. And like your grades are good, but I don't think we could like legally ac yeah. <laughs> accept yeah. you to, to keep yeah. on doing this. And my parents were like, I think it's, it's time it's to time. take the next step. Yeah. But that's you, you, it, it, if you're not from. If you're not from Florida or SoCal or somewhere where you where there you have the opportunity to play with a bunch of because that that's the thing about tennis is uh, like you need players you need to be around players. Well, you, I think more importantly is it's one of the only sports where high school tennis is irrelevant. Yeah. Where yeah. like other sports like baseball, football, soccer, right. you know, you could stay where you're at and you could really shine through high right. school. Yeah, we are all independent. You have to yeah. play USTA, ITF yeah. tournaments. So. Yeah, and you have to travel a lot. I mean, you can't just. Stay, I mean, a, a, as much as I would have liked to go to Pittsburgh every weekend, like <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna kind of elevate yourself in the sport, you have to travel on a national, sometimes international level. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah, like you said, it's a, it's a huge sacrifice. I I remember being so sad about the fact that I wasn't in school anymore. Like I, I wasn't hanging out with, I, I basically gave up all of my like friends when I was like eight and nine. It's I, tough. And, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's tough, but it's all good. I mean, then, then I guess, you know, you make, I, I, I feel like I made so many friends through the places that I was training growing up. Um, and you have even more common interests. So it's, it's, I feel like you can make some special relationships with people just because you're, you're doing the, the same thing. Yeah. Um, so you have a lot in common with people. And uh, growing up and going through high school and everything, you got recruited by Notre Dame, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. And you spent how many years at Notre Dame? Four. I did, I did my Oh, undergrad. you did all four. Yeah, I, I thought four. You, you transferred early. No. Nah. So you want to talk about that? Um, Notre Dame or the... Tr or the whole college the whole, experience. Yeah, for sure. Um, well... I think I got recruited by a few schools like Northwestern, Notre Dame, Texas, Vanderbilt. Um, but I went on a visit to Notre Dame and just absolutely loved it. Um, I remember I went in the spring. I watched them play Indiana, I believe it was. Um, I watched Quentin Monahan, who is from, I think he's also Middle States, I, is I, he? I Isn't grew up he? training with him in College Park. He, I don't know if, it, oh yeah, he was at College he was, Park. Was I was also at College Park for like a year. I would take the train down from Philadelphia on uh, Sunday night and then stay till Friday and train all week and then take the train back up to Philadelphia. Um, but anyways, I, I watched them play Indiana. Quentin Monaghan, who uh, I knew from uh, a different, different uh, he, he, whatever. <laughs> but uh yeah i just liked my visit at notre dame it was beautiful um loved the campus loved the coaches um and then decided to go uh, it was a good offer and um yeah it was just i don't know I, f I feel like it's for for anybody who's like considering college it's definitely i mean people tell you this but like I, it was a pretty easy decision for me i feel like it's it's like a gut feeling that you have and um when you when you're on a, a for me like the the four schools I looked at, I had that gut feeling for all of them. Oh, really? Okay, <laughs> like so it's you, a little bit more you, difficult. You go and like the the recruiting trip's amazing. You get to meet all the guys. Like all all the schools I looked at, the guys were all super nice. Like I was like I could get along with all of them. The coaches were all great. So it was for me, it was like a tough decision. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean for me it was a little bit easier. Not not that the other schools that I was getting recruited by weren't great, but yeah, I just I just um, it was easy for me. And then um, my college experience, uh, man, I just, I love college. It was it was it was an, it was an incredible four years at Notre Dame. Um, I loved Notre Dame is kind of a unique school in that actually when you get there, um, the athletes aren't like so segregated. I, I know that a lot of schools they kind of really segregate the athletes, and you almost never interact with non-athletes 
at like some big athletic schools. My school had sixty thousand like people. Right. Yeah, I have zero friends from yeah. AM. No, who actually, aren't mo- actually, most of my friends were non-athletes at Notre Dame, which I, was which I loved. That's cool. It was it was awesome. I loved it. My uh, senior year, I lived with three non-athletes, so it, it was great. I got kind of the best of both worlds. Um, yeah, it was even like the football players at Notre Dame. They get a random freshman roommate, non non-athlete. Um, so it was cool. And then interacting with people that, um, like, I had friends that weren't athletes, and they thought I was like really cool because <laughs> I was like an athlete. They would always like make fun of me, or they would always, you know, like yeah like make fun of me for wearing my like athlete gear and stuff and like it's, they for, thought they were oh you're so cool like wearing wearing your athlete parka or whatever for uh for people who don't know whenever you go to like a, a big d1 school you have enough clothes to like clothe mm. a small town oh, yeah. so we were like walking billboards for right. the school i remember just wearing like yeah. a complete maroon oh, outfit yeah. yeah and yeah and that's that's the drip you know you you gotta you gotta uh, it's like when you walk around campus it's so easy to tell who's an athlete, who's an athlete cuz you know you got the backpack with the tag on it and um so yeah it's it's actually kind of funny to think about now because i wear my like college gear very sparingly because if i wore too much of it i feel like i would look like an idiot yeah oh i feel the same way <laughs> like yeah but I, I you're right though i i have i have so much notre dame stuff that's still in the packaging i haven't opened because yeah we just got a surplus of of of, especially at Notre Dame, they gave us a lot of cold weather gear, and I don't live in the cold anymore. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then uh, I guess my next question for you, I'm not very in touch with the transfer portal, hmm. but I know because of COVID, that thing blew up. Yeah. And then you end up going to Georgia. Yeah. Um, not that, yeah, I mean, I like I said, I had an, I had an amazing experience at Notre Dame, a- athletically, academically, um, just – it was it was it was great but um i just you know i was first of all i was i was just freezing <laughs> that place is cold and i'm kind of i'm kind of scared of the cold now but uh, i just need i was looking for something something new um fresh experience um and so i went into the transfer portal i think it's not a thing anymore uh, well obviously the transfer portal is but now the covid fifth year thing is done because there's no more so when when COVID happened, everybody got an extra year of eligibility. But did so, did the rules change permanently, not, not or from, does it go back to normal? No, the rules, the transfer portal rules had changed before COVID happened, but then because of COVID, then it was like so easy for athletes to then transfer. Gotcha. Um, so I had I had graduated, but I still had to enter the transfer portal. I don't know that much about it, but yeah, basically I just entered the transfer portal i did like a form filled it out and then um i was able to contact coaches and i started doing the whole recruiting process it was so weird because i felt like i was a 17 year old again like getting recruited for college um but this was this time around it was different because i i could smell bs a little bit more you know like it's you have a completely different perspective and also like when you're in high school the the, you, the your priorities are different like you're worried about how nice the gym is and like how, how w- all the gear that you're getting like things that really don't matter like and how, like how good the girls look at how the, the good the girls are looking um, <laughs> how the parties are yeah exactly like the party life and stuff yeah like you're you're like worried about oh my god like all of these things all that, the stupid things yeah, that 17 year olds think yeah about. exactly but like when i uh, for my fifth year I, uh, all of these things i couldn't have cared less about like yeah. i was it was just like kind of the the tennis part for me um so yeah but it was it was really easy honestly with the transfer portal um uh yeah and then how was your your year it was one year right just yeah one just year? one year how was that at georgia it was awesome honestly it was, it was completely unique to my experience at notre dame um i i did an online master's so i um I almost, I literally never went to campus. That's it was, awesome. it was just, it was just tennis all day for me. So, which was great. That was kind of what I was looking for. Cause at Notre Dame, um, you know, it was, it's a good school and I was kind of having to grind a lot for academics at points. So it was kind of nice to have a year where like it's online. I could really just focus on tennis. Um, and man, Georgia was just awesome. Just getting to play for, for Manny and Jamie. Um, 
and just the history of that program is not not to not to not to be a a, a billboard for for uga but no, but i can't i can't say enough enough good things about my experience at uga as well um they were the, our rivals and i still tell people all the time that's where nca should be held I agree, every year every and like year, my four years there from a tennis standpoint we hated georgia we were like yeah. we got to beat georgia yeah. they were our rivals and i still would be like i love going to play there mm-hmm. No, it's it's a different place because I think that because it was hosted there for so long, there's just such a a tennis culture in Athens. It's unbelievable. It's we, unbelievable. I remember yeah. I remember watching uh, UGA play UCLA my junior year. They had five thousand plus people. You could hear it like two blocks away. You would yeah. think it's like a, a football game. Like you'd yeah. hear the roars oh, and yeah. the barking. They go nuts. I'm like, wow, that's so it, sick. It was for, cool. for tennis, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it was cool. I, and I, I got to play um, I got to play on the stadium court. I played three almost the whole year. Um, so I got to play on the, the – so at, at, in in Athens, there's the stadium is one through overlooking three. one through yeah. three. So And then they call it the pit is four through six. Yep. And actually, when you walk into the pit, there's like a plaque that says uh, where championships are won. It's, it's like four, four, five, and six are where it's, championships are won. It's 100 true in college yeah. tennis. Um, so, so four, five, and six are the pit warriors. So they're just they're down there grinding. Um, but yeah, it was it was awesome just getting getting to play in front of all those fans. And wow, the fans were it was like it was cool because we we got good fans. That, we actually had decent crowds at Notre Dame for our big matches. We would get some good crowds, but it was a different level at UGA and just, just being playing college tennis and s- how many fans we got and just the support, like after matches, how many kids and parents and fans would come up to us. It's, it's nice because after all the hard work you put in, I felt the whole year, man, like what I'm doing matters to more than just me. It matters to my team and so many people in Athens that are really watching and the alumni at UGA, or they eat, sleep, and breathe breathe UGA tennis, yeah. um, and they're 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 there every step of the way. Even you know people that graduated, players that graduated in the '60s are still loving it. That's cool. So um, it was it was a really cool experience to play for UGA. Yeah. And then, uh, like you were saying, it was a pretty electric atmosphere, right? Oh yeah, very electric. Uh-huh. Um, I, I think we lost we lost in the quarters of S- the SEC tournament to t- Tennessee, but we was we had we had we hosted that year last year, um, so it was an unfortunate result. But that match was absolutely insane. Like just how many people in, during the Dubs point, you've got the entire stadium full yeah, stacked filled and people are like sl- are like stomping on the stomping on the bleachers they're and also it's just barking m- people bark oh bark you. oh yeah yeah you got i remember you gotta bark. i was like yeah. going to get a bone you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like looking up, like. yeah you got the barking yeah that's funny yeah I, I, um i actually heard the f- the barking for the first time at notre dame um i mentioned to you or i don't know was i talking to you but uh, I had a good four years as as a Notre Dame football fan. The whole, the whole four years I was there, I went to every football game that I could. But um, the whole four years I was there, we only lost one game at home, and that game was to Georgia, twenty nineteen. My, f- I believe it was my freshman year, either freshman or sophomore year. Um, but that game was electric, and Georgia traveled insanely well for that game. They filled up like a third of our stadium at Notre Dame, which is very impressive. It was just a sea of red. And and after the kickoff, we have a, 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 a tradition at Notre Dame where, you know, the guy kicks the ball, and, and you kind of like do this thing, go, go Irish. And then right and then right after that, you would just hear, <laughs> you just hear this barking from half the stadium, like on the other side. And it was, it was, it was deafening. Like it was, it was intimidating. Um, and then it, it was nice to be on the, on the same side of the bark, my, my, my fifth year. And, uh, I actually have a video of you yeah. using that electricity. Yeah. Uh, let's watch it. Let's, let's and then watch. you could describe what's happening there. Okay. Yeah. I think, th- I think this video kind of shows the the energy in Athens on a, on a on a match day <laughs> you care to elaborate on that celebration sometimes i wonder about myself 
Um, basically, that that was a that was a match against Auburn near the end of the SEC season. Um, the match ended up being four three. I think that when I won that and that put us up, I think I think that made it three all or something something like that. But um, and in that that video, what happened there? Why I stopped was I hit a second serve. And he called it out, and then he got overruled. Um, so I won the match. So that was kind of that little pause before I like smiled and then went insane. Um, but yeah, that was at three. And um, to start the day, I I actually started a steroid pack that the doctor <laughs> had given me because my knee was very injured. If you can see in, in the video, my knees are all taped up, and so the the UGA doctor team doctor um, his solution was to like reduce the inflammation by giving me a steroid pack and so i was like okay sure i was a little sketched out about i don't really like i don't know um taking like pills like that anyways but um it was the that was the first day that i was that i started the the steroid pack and i remember i I took the pills in the morning it was like three pills so it's a, a steroid pack is like five days and you do three pills then three pills, then two pills, then one pill and one pill or something like that. So it's like the strongest dose to start. And he's, you know, he told me it's to reduce the inflammation. So I wasn't thinking that it was going to really affect me that much. But I just remember, you know, like an hour later after taking them in the morning, I was just rabid. Like I was just, I was ready to like go in a cage and maul a bear. Um, just warm up for the match against Auburn. Just, I'm just out of my mind like just jazzed out of my mind and i'm thinking good lord like what 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 like it's it's scary i I was just so so jazzed just 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 ready to compete and um the match starts and my opponent i don't know i i I let he i i didn't like the calls that he was giving me um and we had a ref who was on the on the elderly side and he didn't really want to overrule so um basically it was just a very 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 heated match we were kind of there was overrules flying there was cheat hooking going on cheating going on all over the place a lot of uh a lot of screaming at each other um just a very very intense match so that was kind of the the reaction there um after i won uh i was down a break in the third and then and then came back and won so it was a big win for me and a big win for the team we, we we needed that win to to win the match so just a big moment and you can see it see it in the video do you look locked in there i was locked i was locked like it looks like at the end your teammates are like i know they're coming to celebrate it looks like they're like holding you back <laughs> oh yeah they they knew they knew how how much of a psycho i was um i i apologize to any college refs that if i if i um if i yeah if, if i injured your your uh psyche by getting by hearing screams from me i i apologize um i i really do i i think that um on the court i I mean everybody's like this but i really am just like a different person sometimes and it kind of depends match to match like some matches um some matches i feel very chill and i feel like being chill in that match and just very even keeled is the way to go and then some matches i feel that whether you're down or kind of just maybe you're low on energy that day, I feel like it's beneficial to kind of be a little bit of a psychopath. Well, I think more than a psychopath, like for me, from personal experience, I, uh, how do I put this? I feel like I'm generally a nice person, like just off the court. I'm not, I'm not one to like hook, cheat and whatever. Uh And, and when I get on court, I almost need to be an asshole a little bit, you yeah. know, like have a little bit of an edge, like whether it's like absolutely talking crap or yeah. whether it's getting, getting into it with the ref, whatever something, it is. Yeah. Something. But for me, sometimes I, I'm too nice and I let the match just go by. It's like I, I lost four and four and I'm just like, doo, 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 you know, I it's agree. Like, yeah, no, I mean, and it's no hard feelings. Once you, once you yeah. come off the court, you go back to who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think there's definitely something to be said for that. And it's, and honestly, college tennis kind of, I, I kind of, it's, it's especially on the pro tour if i'm playing somebody who didn't play college tennis then i think that if the match gets to that point where it's very intense and you know gets kind of 
heated and, and beefy, I think that that gives me the advantage because I've been in that environment. And college tennis, you know, you've got frat guys telling you obscene things, you know. It's so, it, so it doesn't really bother me. Like, if it gets wild like that and, and heated, it doesn't really bother me. Like, I, I've been there before. I, I know how to handle that. Like, playing in front of away crowds and they're screaming <laughs> obscenities at you, you know. like <laughs> They know your mom's name, yeah, your girlfriend's oh, yeah, yeah, name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean. But I guess this is, like, a good segue to, to talk about what do you think is the – or how do you think your path was from college tennis to now professional tennis? How do I think it was? Or is, I should say. Yeah. Um, you mean like what is the, you mean like the differences or? Everything about it. Like, do, do you like, do you like college tennis better, professional mm-hmm. tennis better? Uh, yeah. Like what's the vibe like in both? Just like almost a, a brief yeah, journey I got you. of yours. You um, I mean, obviously it's r- really different. I, I would say that, uh, pro tennis, as much as I loved college tennis, I think that, you know, pro tennis is more important to me. Um, cause it's ultimately what I dreamed about. You know, I didn't, my, when I was a kid, I wasn't dreaming about playing college tennis. I was dreaming about playing pro tennis. Um, so that was kind of my ultimate goal. So this is uh, now I'm here, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm doing the thing now. Yeah. So, um, so I, I would say that I, now more than ever, I I think I'm taking my tennis and just I, I'm taking pro tennis more seriously than like ever before, and just tennis in general, um, because uh, because I know yeah I mean I don't know I just feel like the later the the later the older you get as a player the more the the clock is ticking and the more oh, yeah. like the more urgent it becomes. I I pe- I think people don't realize. Again, this actually ties back to what we were talking about at the beginning. The clock starts ticking when you pick up the racket, to be honest. Like, I know it sounds so serious, but it's like <laughs> you were 11 putting in the work. Like, if, yeah. you, if you weren't doing it then, mm-hmm. you're so behind now, you know? Yeah. So it's like the clock's even ticking in college. Like, if, if you were to be able to go back, if I were to be able to go back, I wish I would have spent a little bit more time on the court in college. Like, the the NCAA allows you X amount of hours a week. I don't I don't remember the actual time, but... That's not enough to be pro. You gotta you gotta be on the court. And so I don't disagree I, with that. I, I I feel like I think you make a I valid feel like point. you practice a lot. In, I I feel like you. I mean I don't know between balancing academics and um, social life and sleep and so all of these things. I, I feel a, like you practice a lot in college. I have wise words from one of my old coaches back at College Park. He always said, "There's three S's in college. There's like the social, the sport, and the uh, there's four S's. The there's sp- sleep." We, social we don't have time for sleep and, and scholars and, and, and was, he said like and, scholar or school no, school, or, school yeah and school. so anyways he's like you, you really only do three see we was you only really do two okay this the sleep was the sleep was guaranteed like not guaranteed but that was kind of you got to sleep so it was i it don't was, know i i sacrificed <laughs> to sleep in, in in at notre dame i was doing school social sports and no sleep but like you know you, you hear him say that and you're like ah you yeah, can do it all yeah. and then you, you finally get there and you realize like yeah you really only have time for two of those oh absolutely no absolutely there's not enough i mean college there's just so many it's just an it's just an overstimulation there's just too many <laughs> things coming at you there's too many yeah but anyways getting back to the the pro tennis thing um what, is this kind of what what i like better um i wouldn't say that i like one more than the other it's just different um i do like how pro tennis is it kind of it's kind of like everything like it's more than just tennis as well um because i mean unless you have a like a real like a huge team around you where you know if you have like a manager and like um a fitness coach and you like, don't have that unless yeah, you're you, like top exactly top 50 yeah, even yeah. Like, not top 100 maybe yeah unless you've got like a bunch of people helping you then you've got a lot of res- a lot of things to deal with you've got to take care of your body you've got to um do your scheduling. Um, you've got to take care of transportation, getting to tournaments. You've got to, um, make sure you, you know, your rackets, your grips, um, towels, you pack all the right stuff. Whereas in college, all that stuff is taken care of, right? Like you you have, they make the schedule, they make the flights, they make the rental cars. We were treated so well in college. college. Yeah. They have the grips. You basically just have to show Show up and play. play. Um, so that, that's definitely the biggest difference. 
Um, and then the other difference is I think in college, it's very easy to be motivated. I would oh, say yeah. it's easier to be motivated in college. And, and, the energy is different. Like you would never do that celebration mm-hmm. in pro tennis. Never. No, like, that would you be could, absurd. I remember, <laughs> I remember we, I was playing Georgia and I was, I'll, I'll say his name. I was playing a meal at, at A&M. This was for the SEC championship. Like, I think we had the same wins and it was essentially whoever won that match was going to win the SEC regular season. And I was playing really well. I won the first set, like pretty good, you know, just rolling. And he won the first point of the second set, like the first two points. And after both points, just like was looking at me screaming. Yeah. And like, you're thinking like, in, that would never fly in professional yeah. tennis. You wouldn't be out on court 17 here. You just won like one point in the second yeah. set after just getting rolled and you and start screaming. Yeah. It works though. It he does he work. came back, he beat me. It definitely works. But like he got himself back in the match. Like the mm-hmm. energy is just everywhere in college tennis. Yeah, that's that's what that that's kind of what goes back. I mean, that goes back to what we were saying that sometimes you kind of need to be a psycho. You don't need to, but it can help to be a psychopath. Just creating that energy from nothing. Um, so that's I, I've learned a little bit um, recently that sometimes I do play better when maybe looking at me, you're thinking that I'm I'm too negative. But you know, if I miss a shot and I'm like. Ah! <laughs> you know maybe a coach might say oh like like that's ne- negativity is bad like get that out of here but honestly sometimes that's helped me like like just get into the match get my energy going oh yeah um and when you yeah it's it's disrupting when you play somebody who's like it slows the match down yeah. i always whenever whenever i go and talk to my coach i'm always like sometimes that match went too fast mm. like you just you lost fast no yeah. motion no nothing right. like when you when you go and do that it slows the mental part of the match down. It like sure. breaks things up. It chops yeah. things up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, um, momentum is, is huge. Um, and I was actually talking to, um, to another player about this last week. I had never thought about it this way, but he told me, and he's, um, like kind of a, a really good returner, I would say, um, more of like a returner than a server. But he said, uh, that he thinks about like, slowing up the the server a lot um whereas i i don't really i don't really try to do that i don't really think about that like if if a server's rolling i don't really like there's a lot of things there's yeah. where you stand i do that too like yeah. sometimes you, you, you stand like an extra yeah. five feet back you yeah. you subconsciously change their targets like mm-hmm. you you may not go up the right. line and, and think that that wide serve is still there or mm-hmm. like just looking at the court it's like putting a cone there and then when I step five feet back, that cone subconsciously moves. Yeah. Oh, no, that's definitely, I mean, as a server, when somebody either steps really far in or steps really far back um, and just changes it up or steps really far to the right or steps really far to the left, like before the serve, you want to convince, you want to tell yourself that, oh, this person, uh, like I got them where I want them. Like they're, they're really changing stuff. But sometimes it works. It's yeah. like, like if I'm, you know, if I'm bombing aces and I'm feeling good and I have a different target in front of me, I'd different view uh it can be it can be daunting and it can definitely uh throw your rhythm off because yeah rhythm rhythm's big e- even as a returner um like having having oh that was that was the thing that you told me was sometimes as a server if you're you can also do it the other way so like if if um if you're serving and the guy's locked in on your return if you slow up as your server then they don't have as much rhythm on the, your return because it's like uh like when you're getting, if you're getting fed returns, you you're like you get you're gonna get locked in on them. Yeah. But you know, like in dubs, when you when you play, um, when you're having to play a different server each game, it's so much more difficult to return because it's just a different Less different rhythm. rhythm. Yeah. 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 And uh, anything else? Any other remarks you would have on on the the transition from college to pro tennis? Um. No, I mean, would you, again, this is just me being me. Uh, would you prefer the format of college tennis if it was in the pros or no? Would I prefer the co- format of college tennis if it was in the pros? I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, I think it'd be so cool. I mean, I think I, I guess that would mean like a team. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be, that'd be really cool. Um, I mean, what, w- there's team sports in every other professional sport. So what? I mean, I mean, this could go off. This could be a podcast on its own. Yeah. But uh, I guess kind of where I'm getting at is like the college experience aside, just pure on-court 
college tennis and pure on court pro tennis. Which one do you prefer? As a as a player, like yeah, as it? you right now, your opinion. Um, I would say pro tennis. Pro tennis. I would say pro tennis. Um, I th- I th- I do like the whole the the idea of you know having because I mean in pro tennis you kind of you have to do you have to do well in a tournament. You can't just do well in one day. You can't just have one good day. In college tennis, it's like it's match, 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 match. Like each match is unique. Whereas in pro tennis, you show up and you're at a tournament. So you've got to win today, tomorrow, yeah. the next day. So it's, it's, it's but more, you're having to manage more and you're, and you're having to, I feel like. It's a double-edged sword though. Cause it's like in college tennis, you're able to win or lose and you always have that next match. Whereas yeah. in, if, if you are on a bad streak in professional tennis, you, you get one match a week and yeah. then you got six days and then another match and then six yeah. days. No, it definitely sucks. I mean, it's, it's, so it's, it's, it's it, when a, it, when you, when it's not going well, it's, it's way worse. Absolutely. Cause in college tennis, you can lose th- four matches in a row, but your team might win four matches in a row. And that's a whole you, other thing I didn't even think about. Yeah, yeah. I mean like when you lose in college tennis and your team wins, it's like, Oh fine. Kind well, of we still won. It, yeah. It's like, cool, whatever. Like, let's go, let's go home and celebrate. You know, I think one thing for me, I hate admitting when I was wrong or when I am wrong, but my, my coach, Steve Denton, he always used to tell us cause we were, we all wanted to play pro like literally one through six. We all wanted to continue our tennis after. Uh-huh. And he would always tell us because we we always had like ourselves in mind and our future in mind. And he'd sit us down and be be like, guys, I've done it all. Like he's he's been to finals of Grand Slams. And he's like, my favorite part of my tennis career has always been college tennis college, when yeah. he when he played for UT. Yeah. And he's guy he's like, guys, just enjoy it now. He's like, I know you guys are like focused on like the next match and you know, like you're winning and losing, you're ranking, blah, blah, yeah. blah. He's like, just soak it in and enjoy yeah. it looking yeah. back at it i, I wish yeah. i wish i would have listened to him a little bit no more. absolutely that's that's really good advice um and as stubborn as we all were we were like nah nah you're yeah, wrong blah blah yeah. blah and no i mean that's that's true i mean just playing in front of playing for playing for your university that you love is so cool, cool. Yeah. so cool and just playing playing for the the guy next to you like when you lose and man losing like a three all match is so is so brutal you so can, brutal because you lose not not only for yourself but you're you your let team. everybody down yeah. i know like they they don't think of it like that but you like as as you lost that last point you're just like yeah i, I think it's like you know everybody down i think it's cool when um guys especially i would say especially foreign guys uh when they play college tennis and i feel like going in a lot of them are just thinking oh like this is my this is my diving board into pro tennis. Like I'm purely using this as whatever development, maybe a, a, a safety precaution or w- whatever it may be, but they're really thinking about, you know, pro tennis. Yeah. And then they get to get there and they, they're the most, know, they, in, they're the yeah, most, they get really into it. Like yeah. they're, they're, they go to they get in the spring and it's like, wow, this is so cool. Like playing like co- this is college. Like, and it means so much. And, I feel like it, I, and then yeah, it's very evident when you when you see a guy come in and and just really loves it. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like there's a lot of guys out there that like, you know, maybe came from Europe. They know nothing about college. A lot of Europeans tell me, "Oh, I just went to the school because they gave me a good offer. I never even took a visit. Like I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anybody. I like barely knew the coach. And then they they get here and they love it. And they, you know, then they go to the football games and it's like <laughs> they get the whole experience and yeah. it's it's cool. So um uh yeah but but going back to what you were saying about um i i had this i had this thought earlier when you when you were speaking about um the clock starting when you're younger yeah um that is true but i'm a big believer that everybody is running their own race and oh for sure some people some people peak at like 30 for sure like they're like they're in the 500s and then like at 30 boom they shoot up one thing i would tell anybody who's younger you know whether you're 12 14 16 or even in college uh, i wish i'd told myself this in college because i i mean i i wasn't the most amazing college player i wasn't an all-american um and so i i was always like comparing myself to my peers and you know i was lower ranked and so i was like oh i'm because i'm lower ranked now i just feel like i'm so far behind the eight ball I got, I won't well, be able to make it in pro tennis cause I'm playing three and the level is so even, similar. I'm not even, yeah, well, 
yeah, like I'm, I'm not, I'm playing three. I'm not, I'm, I'm just not good enough. But I would, I wish I could have told myself like it's the level. Yeah, like you were saying, the the level, the margins are so small. I think Keegan made a phenomenal point when he was on the podcast, where it's like you got to visualize beating these guys, no matter who it is, because if you go into that match like comparing yourself to them, you you already lost. Like if you compare yourself to the guy you're about to play. Yeah. And it's like you said, it's like five all in the third, or it's just it's a tight game. You're preparing for the worst case scenario. Like you're you're, you're too hard on yourself. So you got to really, like you said, focus on yourself. Mm -hmm. For just, sure. You know. What yeah. I'm I mean, I think ultimately the most important thing until you're like, I mean, even now I'm I just turned 24, and I'm even now I'm more focused on developing my game right now in the in the last couple months because I've realized since I, I started playing last summer and I've realized I could play 9 million tournaments, but I'm not going to get to whatever top, top hundred if I don't change my game and develop the areas that I need to. So I, I need to improve my game, like tournaments aside, results aside. I know that I'm not good enough now. I need to work on things. I need to get better. So that's, I mean, and I'm 24. So like, you know, at 18, 19, you really sh 16 whatever it is you shouldn't be 12 <laughs> yeah like you shouldn't be so hung up on results because no they, they come all. and go like it kind of it, it's like a stock you know you you have you you get not not worse but you know you might have a period where you're kind of yeah, losing your, your peers away ahead of you your confidence is down but if you ultimately just think about improving and just the process i feel like that's the most important thing also another thing about college is that um like if you're playing six then you're only playing all of the other sixes in the country i also are, are so editors. you're not really getting opportunities <laughs> at the better players so you shouldn't even be thinking oh that guy's so much better than me because well, you're not even playing him like, also you're not, you know what i mean no it i was gonna say our editors are gonna have to bleep this one out but playing in the back of the lineup is an absolute mind fuck because you are you like you said you're in the trenches back there mm -hmm. and you you could be the cleanest player ever and you could be a good player and you throw somebody back there and that guy is just hacking away screaming getting yeah. in your head fighting for every yeah. point he will dive and bleed for yeah. that match and it's just a different attitude playing there than playing one two and three where it's like yeah proper tennis yeah you know yeah like even if you play if you play you know that your coach throws you at two or one and you lose you still feel good you're, about you're yourself. You're like, oh, well, yeah. I'm still playing one and two. I played so the best mental. guy on their team, so like I can't feel too bad. Yeah. You know? Whereas, you know, if you're playing, you know, four, five, six, and, you know, you lose, it's like, oh, well, I can't even beat the – I can't even win at five. But it's it, – you really shouldn't be thinking about that. Like um, – You just have to focus on your game. You just got to focus like on your game. Like you said. Yeah. Because, like, my, my freshman year, I was – I had a really good fall, and I was ranked, but I was playing five. And so I was winning matches – and my ranking was going down and I'm just sitting there because I didn't really know like a lot about rankings and yeah. like the whole college tennis, like how everything worked. I'm sitting there. I'm like, how is this possible? Like I won like two, ma I won both matches that weekend and like I dropped 10 spots. And, like I won yeah. the next two matches. I dropped another 10 spots. And by like the end of the year, I was like almost not ranked, but doing unbelievable at five, you know? Yeah. So like as a, as a player in the bottom of that lineup, you got to be just mentally nails. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely college. It's just... It's just tough to, it's tough to compare. Uh, the rankings are just sometimes a little bit very out of whack because, like, I mean, because yeah, everybody's playing a different spot, yeah. so you're not like it's not a true who's the best because, uh, because it's not tournaments. Like, it's not you're not getting the whole grouping of of players. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like if you're playing six, then you're always going to be playing like that scrapper. So I feel like if you're Playing six, it's easy to get into a game style of just kind of sitting back and and like kind of pushing and grinding because you're you're just playing how your competition is playing. Whereas if you're playing one, you're kind of forced to like you're not going to win matches if you're just like grinding. So you're forced to play. You can only play the guy in front of you. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but yeah, college college tennis and pro tennis are just different. But Honestly, I didn't even I didn't really realize how good the level in college tennis was until I left. Well, I mean, shoot, when you when you get to those those Power Five conferences mm. and the the top schools, I think we just discussed this today. My freshman year, quarterfinals at NCAAs, we played Virginia, mm. 
And their lineup was Ryan Shane at one. Uh, I forget his career high, but he like won NCAAs, played the U.S. Open, put that in perspective. Mitchell Frank at two. I don't know a guy with like more accolades than is that how you say it? Accolades. Accolades. Sorry, you, you my got bad. It. You got it. Anyways, uh, he's just unbelievable player. Three was Colin Altamirano. One Kalamazoo played U.S. Open. Like could be debatably their one. Yeah. Four was Ty Kwiatkowski. Yeah. Again, could be their one. Wow. Yeah. Five. I played five against Alex Richard, who's yeah, like top two hundred right now. Yeah, maybe even even higher. I think. That and, guy, I mean, yeah. And Incredible six was player. J.C. Argon, who's played slams yeah, as well. Top, yeah, top two hundred and fifty or whatever. Yeah. Imagine like how how do you compete against that? Yeah. That that team's absurd though. That's that, absurd. That's, that's that. I feel like I don't know. I I feel like that's that. I I don't I don't want to make any claims here, but that that team was absurd. Like that, I feel like they that's were like by that far for, the best team. They were like that for four years. History. They had Henrik yeah. playing six like the next year. Yeah, that that was an absurd team. It's yeah, just just cool to watch. Honestly, it's a high level. Those are those were. What have you ever seen those YouTube videos on of like the highlights of that team every year when they won NCAA's yeah. on like Virginia Sports TV or yeah. whatever? So cool, yeah. so hype. <laughs> but um, winding things down, I should uh ask you one more question here. I'm going to I'm going to ask you what do you think is the toughest thing for you so far or the hardest thing or the thing you like the least about playing pro tennis since you started? Yeah. Just one thing you're just like I got to do this. I would say that the toughest part for me is the fact that I haven't really like I I kind of miss my friends a lot and I can't go out of my way to like go hang out with them because I you, you just can't really make you, there's not really any time for vacation as a pro tennis player. No, not at all. Because, um, yeah, like all my friends live in from from Notre Dame, live in Chicago or New York. My friends from UGA, you know, are still in Athens, and I'm just traveling every week playing <laughs> different tournaments. And yep. you know, I I know other players, and I'm friends with other players, but they're not like I I none of the players that I that I love on the pro tour are like my real true closest friends that I like yeah, consider no, I my brothers. Right. So like I, I'm, I, I'd say that's the hardest part for me. Like sometimes it's very lonely. Oh yeah. Um, whether it's, you know, sitting in a hotel room by yourself or what about the travel days alone? That's yeah. probably my least favorite thing is most futures are in small towns of small countries or just small towns of countries. So you're going to have to take one to two, one to three flights. And then you're going to have to, commute once you get to the airport for anywhere from like 30 minutes to like two hours and it's just like doing that alone is just the most stressful thing in the world it's tough i i kind of just try to turn my brain off honestly you can't. what if you're in like a crazy country like i'm on edge <laughs> yeah um yeah like that when is you're going tough. through like crazy flying, flying sucks sometimes like when i when i entered russia this was Whoa. before all the bs <laughs> okay. like uh, i went with chad and when we got to customs, like they took our passports and they had us sit down just by ourselves. And they put like two, two army guards or armed guards, like yeah. sitting next to us, like on both sides, like, like we're criminals or something. Yeah. Just, we had to sit there for like two hours while we were waiting for them to process our stuff. And yeah. it's just like, you can't turn your brain off <laughs> when uh, you're going true. through stuff like that. Um, yeah, absolutely. But I, I will say that, uh, that, that stuff can be good. And I mean, after you repeatedly go through just like uncomfortable travel days, it's, it's kind of annoying, but I will say that traveling to like different countries and different places all on my own, I feel like it's made me a little bit more street smart. Like I, I oh, feel like yeah. I know how to manage myself and what to look out for and how to get around in a foreign country, e even when there might be a language barrier very well. Yeah. I feel like I've learned that skill and that, that's a cool skill to have. I feel like later in life you know you want to travel to a remote place just like figuring out the things to do the um how to get around well, how to kind of handle yourself i think because especially as an american like i mean i feel like americans have the reputation of being very like sheltered very oh, like, yeah. culturally unaware i remember one one person asked andrea like oh like spain like how far of a drive is that like <laughs> have you seen a map <laughs> you know <laughs> Um, but, uh, this may be like, a this may be a tad bit off topic, but, but similar to what we were talking about, like when, as tennis players, like growing up, 
just a something you get as being a tennis player is just being a phenomenal competitor mm. and doing whatever it takes to win and to survive. Like the word I'd use is to survive. survive. Yeah. So we were in Montreal. Um, it really hit me. It, it, I don't know why. It just it was stupid. It hit me. I was talking with Sam Monet. He lives in Montreal. He didn't play the tournament. He's he's retired, has a kid, family, doing great. And we were just BSing. And he was like, yeah, I have a family, kid. I He owns a store and he sells. I forget I don't want to speak for him. He sells something. He's like, dude, I kill it. He mm -hmm. goes, you don't realize how, I mean, this isn't a knack on the world, but how mediocre the world is. Like people just learn to get up, do their job, yeah. just do it and yeah. be done. He's like, not, ex being a not like go out and excel. Yeah. Being a tennis player, we're, we're all every day. How do we get better? better. Yeah. That's And so he's like, I went into yeah. this job as a, as a tennis player mindset. And he's like, I'm killing it. Absolutely yeah. killing it. Yeah. And like, just, I think as tennis just trying players, to be as like a, kind of a perfectionist mindset and as being tennis players, like you said, you, you pick up these like street smart, just competitive survival skills that you will ha have for the rest of your life. Yeah. That I mean, the, people I, who I, don't play tennis just w won't understand. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's probably true of a lot of sports, but uniquely to tennis, it's you're on completely, your own. Yeah, yeah. It's individual. You know, you got to problem solve. I mean, like, like we were saying in pro tennis, you've got to problem solve getting to the tournament, managing yourself. And then in the match, you've got a problem solved <laughs> in the match and nobody's helping you. Um, especially, you know, if you don't have a coach there, uh, which I don't all of the time. Um, so it's, it's completely up to me. Um, and yeah, I, I, I do, I think there's, I mean, I, I feel like people say that to you. It's like, Oh, tennis is like, it's a, it's a, it, it teaches you so much about life, but I, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with that more. I feel like it's such a, it, it, yeah, hit, it, it just it teaches, hard you, when it just teaches it. you so much about life, like just how to work hard, how to overcome, how to problem solve, um, how to you can't how to be alone, how to be alone, how to how to deal with you know being alone, being lonely. Um, yeah, it's 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 uh, and especially, uh, I mean, it's not just being a tennis player. I feel like it's not like it's being a tennis player that wants to be the best tennis player they can be. I feel like you don't get to the level that we're at without just having it in you from birth that not, not maybe not from birth, but like from a young age that like, you know, you are just competitive. You not going to quit. Like I'm just going to keep getting better. I want, I just want it. Like I want to, I want to keep going. I think a trait of tennis players is we're competitive to a fault. Mm. Like off the Oh, court. absolutely. Like, <laughs> I, I don't think it's a fault. I, I, I'm like so open about the fact that I need to compete about everything. My I family have, knows that too. Oh yeah, Andrea, sh she'll see this and laugh. Like she's sometimes like, that's enough, AJ. Like yeah. I just want to relax. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter like who's getting up the steps first or who's, I, who's I like driving to the I restaurant I don't first. think that <laughs> things are fun unless you make them competitive. Oh, I'm the same way. Like even, you know, it's like a leisurely activity, I got to make it, I got to make it competitive. Like I was, I was golfing with my dad a couple of weeks ago and you know, I mean, I grew up, my dad is a way better golfer than me, but you know, I'm starting to get a little better and I'm like, like, all right, like who's going to win this? I'm nine? so competitive. I wouldn't like, be able to play with like him. relax. And I'm like, no, we got it. We got to do it. <laughs> um, and yeah, my, yeah, I, I've gotten my, my family, uh, we've had some ugly family days <laughs> just because of my competitiveness. Like I ru I've ruined so many family activities because I like can't deal, can't stand with, can't stand to lose. I think all tennis players have been there and done that for sure. But for sure. Uh, anyways, thanks guys for hanging in there with us for almost an hour. Wow, Let's that go. that flew by. Did it? it that it, flew it, by. It, Look, was that an hour? Fifty-five minutes. God. Damn. So, anyways, that was quick. Thank you guys for showing up. If you liked it, click that like button and please subscribe. Uh, any last comments before we turn this thing off? Uh, no, thank you for having me on, AJ. It was it was an absolute pleasure. That's thank fun. you for the coffee as well. Yeah. I didn't. This I was so we focused. AJ, uh, this is AJ's coffee coffee grinds. Uh, he brought it from Pittsburgh and I'm made a me a cup. Coffee guy. So, uh, I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd love to have you on again. Oh yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you, guys. <laughs>